sometimes multiple products are produced from the same input. So let's take a dairy farm for example. So if we have a bunch of cows and they're producing milk and then we process that milk right through some kind of separation process, we end up with whole milk and we end up with some cream. Right? So we've got two different products and they each have their own unique sales value. Right? Let's just say we could sell the cream for $360,000 and we could sell the whole milk for $240,000, right? They have different prices, but both of these products, the whole milk and the cream, what they have in common is they both came ultimately from the same cows and, and the same separation process, right? So let's just say that the cost of, of maintaining the dairy farm and getting these cows to produce the raw milk was $400,000. And then let's say that there was this process to separate out uh, the, the whole milk, the cream, etc. So that's going to be $200,000. And so each of these costs here, each of these costs we're going to refer to as joint costs. Okay, joint costs. And now here's the question is how do we allocate these joint costs among the products, right? How do we allocate them? And so these products, in this case, we're going to call these, they're going to be called joint products. Now sometimes you'll hear of something called a byproduct, right? So a byproduct. A byproduct is usually when you when you have one of the products here that has a really low sales value relative to the other products. And so uh, the byproduct could be something like let's say you're making lumber and then you have some sawdust or something like that is that that's called a byproduct. But in this case we're we're not going to have any byproducts here. We've just got a couple of joint products, right? Cuz they have sales values that are very close to one another. And so the question is how do we allocate how do we go about allocating the joint cost, right? Because each these the, the cost to produce the raw milk, right? That cost, we needed that cost to produce either the whole milk or the cream, right? We can't really easily separate out, well, how much of that cost was attributable to the cream and how much was attributable to the whole milk because we needed to do this to get both of those products, right? So it's a common cost, that's why we call it a joint cost, and we need some way to allocate it. And so one way we could go about doing it is we could allocate it based on the relative sales value of the products, right? So the relative sales value. So we could say, for example, we say, look, this the cost of this this cream here, that three hundred and sixty thousand, and the cost or excuse me, the sales value of the cream and the sales value of the whole milk, if we add those together. We add those together, we have six hundred thousand dollars, right? So if we take for the cream, the sales value of the cream, three hundred and sixty thousand, divided by the total sales value, of both products, six hundred thousand, it gives us sixty percent. So of the total estimated sales value for each of these products, cream would be sixty percent. Since there's only two products, that would leave whole milk at forty percent, right? And then we could say, okay, forty percent of the joint costs here are going to be allocated to the whole milk uh, segment or product line, however you want to think about it. And then we could say 60% of the joint costs would be allocated to the cream. Now we don't have to do it that way on this, this relative sales value. That's just one way of doing it. We could also do it on maybe the number of gallons of, of raw milk that's used in each process, right? So we could do it on that. We could also look at something like the net realizable value, NRV. And I'm going to make a video on each one of these methods so we can talk about that more in the future. I just want to familiarize you with that. Now, here's something to notice, and this is something that's very important with cost accounting, is when we're allocating these joint costs, the reason we're ultimately doing it is we might need to, to calculate cost of goods sold or, or something like that, right? So, or maybe there's a lawsuit and, and we're really forced to, to allocate these costs to, to these products. But when we're making decisions about what to do from this point forward, right? So this is the point here, right here, where these become two unique products, that's called the split off point. So this is the split off point. Okay, that's the point in the process where the joint products can be recognized as uniquely separate products, right? At this point here, now we can say, well, we've got two different products, okay? And so 
we the, the all the costs before this, the joint costs, sometimes by allocating them to the products, that can lead us to make bad decisions later, right? So you might hear about, and we're going to make videos on this, there's also a, a, a decision-making process called sell or process further, right? So we might have the option, for example, to process this whole milk. We might be able to turn that through some process into non-fat milk, for example. Maybe there's a process we could do to t turn it into non-fat milk. And then for the cream, we might be able to make that into to sour cream or butter or something like that. And then we could look and say, well, what would be the cost, the incremental cost to turn the cream into sour cream? What would be the incremental cost to turn the whole milk into non-fat milk, right? And we can go and say, okay, the incremental cost will be 40,000. And then what would be the incremental, what would be the new sales value? What would be the sales value of the sour cream relative to the cream, right? And then we're basically doing a cost benefit analysis. But here's the thing. If we have allocated some of the joint costs of these, these costs here that took place before these became unique separate products at the split off point, if we allocate those down here, they can affect our decision, right? And then now we've got a problem because now we might be making bad decisions because basically we need to understand that these joint costs here, once we reach the split off point, those costs have already been incurred, right? They're done with. And so going forward, we might just want to think about the incremental costs and revenues, right? And so any of the joint costs of stuff that happened up here beforehand, by allocating that down here, that can lead us to make bad decisions. We really want to make decisions at, at the margin because all the costs that happened up here, once we get down here and are deciding whether we want to sell or process further, well, those joint costs have already been occurred, so there's, there's really nothing that could be done to avoid them.